Mr. Alex Mistrada. He's one of the few full-time professionals investigators in the UFO field. He worked at MUFON, Los Angeles, director of investigations, and a former MUFON, uh, part of the MUFON star team. He's currently the director of investigations for the UPARS administration, and Alex is a cryptozoologist. He broke some news just this week in regards to these photographs that you're looking at right now. The 1970s, Navy, Arctic, something went down, something massive, something big. When we shared this on Third Phase of the Moon, the world was shocked. And I know uh, Mr. Mistrata has some information for us right here at Third Phase of the Moon. We're going to be going over what the story behind these photographs, and hopefully we could get some information, some answers. And if anybody has any questions for Alex, the number to call in is 347 934 Is everybody ready for a ride right here at Third Phase of the Moon? Let's get to it. Alex, Ms. Strata, are you there? Yes, I am. How are you? Hey, pretty good. Welcome to the show, Alex. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know what? Uh, Let's get down to it. What's up with these uh, photographs that have uh, basically almost broke the Internet? Quite amazing. Yeah, this really uh, blew up. It even surprised me. Yeah, what happened was uh, I got a call about a week and a half ago, two weeks. From, I have some sources in Europe that I've used in the past from prior investigations, mostly on Russian, uh, on Russian UFOs, which was one of my uh, favorite subjects. I wrote a chapter in one of my books. But, uh, so I've used the sources for years. And basically, they told me some of these pictures are coming out, and you've got to check them out. And they're going to be appearing in this French magazine called Top Secret. So, I've, you know, I've heard these stories before, crazy pictures. I'm like, okay, sure, I'll check them out. I wasn't expecting anything much, to be honest with you. Saw the pictures, and as I think everybody can tell, they're pretty mind-blowing. And nobody was investigating this at all. Nobody knew anything, and not on the source, sent the photos, and that was it. There was a little bit of info on the magazine. All it said was that they were supposedly taken in March of 1971 from a United States submarine somewhere in the Arctic between Iceland and Jan Mayen Island, which is uh, owned by Norway, by the way. And it named the submarine as a USS Trepang SSN 674. And it named the Emerald on board by the name of Dean Reynolds. And that is all the info that you had on this case. So I decided that I wanted this case, I'm going to take it on, and I'm going to pursue this because I think, you know, it was obviously, as you can tell, it's worthwhile. Absolutely. So, Shocking photographs. Go ahead, Alex. Yeah, so as it turns out, I was able to confirm uh, through some official channels, you know, and then also maybe website, the Internet's really great nowadays, that indeed the sub of Trepang was at that location in March of 1971, for sure. They were there the scientific... Uh, expedition, you know, just some mundane, uh, I don't know, I'm not even really sure exactly what they're doing, but they're going through the Arctic ice, a lot of tests. Anyway, had nothing to do with UFOs or anything, supposedly. Uh, and the Admiral was indeed on board of the sub. And also, I got another name by a guy by the name of John Klicka, which was, uh, according to the story, was uh, the first guy to see the objects, and he informed the Admiral, and they're the one that took the pictures. So I was able to track both of those guys down. Um, I worked with Steve Morello at Upar, and Steve was the next Navy guy. So I asked him to talk to the Admiral for me. I was hoping kind of like the Navy connection, you know, would help get some info out. And I talked to John Clicker myself, who actually had heard me on a radio show the week prior, and he was actually interested in talking to me. So anyway, as it turns out, they both denied having anything to do with this, as pretty much expected. Um, the Admiral had a great quote. He told me, all he said was, I only saw ice. Wow. That's, uh, you know, basically the answer you get when you start uh, delving in uh, with public officials. You're pretty much not going to get the answer straight. But what about these photographs? Have we, uh, we've analyzed it. We don't see anything that uh, shows any kind of manipulation. They seem very authentic. What is it? Uh, my, and we, we're having opinions. And yeah. our first, some of the opinions that are coming in just off right when people see it, they're just like wondering what they are looking at. Maybe it's like a submarine kind of breaching out of the water and then crashing back in, or a major uh, zeppelin of some sort, some airship. But we just can't quite put our finger on it. What is 
the census. I know you've worked with Jimmy Church and some other uh, experts in the field. What's their uh, opinions? What's the census well, of what this object is? Yeah, I mean, you name it, you know, I've heard every opinion on the planet. I did send these out to a special effects guy. Uh, actually, one of my friends, he's actually working on uh, Independence Day, the new one right now. So he's, you know, he's had a lot of experience in Hollywood, and he was able to take a look at those. And he was pretty sure that they're not doctored and not hoaxes. So now we don't know what they are, right? We know that he's 100% sure that these are real pictures, and so am I. My first impression, to be honest with you, is that these were ours, some kind of test. Because, I mean, they were, you know, the pictures are perfectly framed for the most part. So, and then, you know, I had another, actually, I got another lead just today. This is, so this is brand new. Uh, I had a contact that uh, sent me an email from Germany. And I have to check this down. Like I said, it just came in today. According to him, these are Soviet, or ex-Soviets, or Russians. And that's pretty much all I got so far. So I'm pursuing that angle right now. And well, you know what? Much... Yeah, go ahead. What, how, how were these photographs distributed? Did, did the French magazine uh, make contact with the person that uh, shared the photos? How were they leaked? Yeah, they were leaked with anonymous source. And, you know, and one of the reasons I was so public with this, and, I, you know, I'm doing your show and other shows, I'm hoping whoever sent the pictures to kind of get a hold of me at some point. Uh, yeah, as of right now, we have no idea who took these. Now, I have a, a little bit of a theory. If you can see on the, the, uh, on the pictures that Sigma on the, on the side of a lot of those, Sigma, as it turns out, is a photo agency that went out of business in 2010. They were huge in the 70s. They had archives of hundreds of thousands of pictures. They were bought. They were bought over by uh, Corbett, which was owned by Bill Gates, and they had a lot of legal problems, and they were getting sued left and right. So eventually, they liquidated, and they went out of business in 2010. In the meantime, though, these huge archives disappeared. You know, a lot of pictures were destroyed, a lot of pictures were stolen, and as we analyze these pictures, we notice that there's a lot of folds on them. So it appears to me that somebody probably stole them, went in, folded them. You know, maybe put them in a jacket, whatever, and walked out. As, at least that's my theory for right now. So well, it could you be know, anybody. You know. Suppression is uh, the name of the game in, in the business of uh, trying to cover up photographs such as these, I'd imagine. Yeah, it could be. You know, what's very strange to me is that they were released to a French magazine, which is it's a good magazine, you know. I, read, I can read French. So, but, I mean, what's the readership for that, right? It's minimal. It's, it's not a huge subject in, you know, in France to begin with, and it's, again, it's not... Why release them here? I mean, they're not here. So, which I thought that was kind of strange. What's What's absolutely strange too is how massive the, these, uh, how big the structure is, and you can see the impact uh, in, in on the ocean over there, in the Arctic. What is um, What's going on in these photographs is still mind-boggling. When I first saw them, it did remind me straight out of Independence Day. That one photograph of the thing immersing out of the clouds, basically just straight out of the Independence Day uh, visuals right there. But this, to me, seems that this isn't Hollywood. This is something real. And uh, I wish you luck, Alex, in hoping the person that shot these photographs reach out. Reach out. Let's uh, break, break this. See what's up, what's going down. Yeah, we're hoping. I have another lead on another potential sub. But, you know, I mean, the bottom line is if it's the Trepang, if the Trepang is not responsible, let's assume it's not, and I believe Sackett and uh, Clicka, then really these could come from any sub, from, you know, any nation, if you really think about it. So it's complicated. But, you know, no, again, I have a few leads. Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, it definitely is a, a complicated subject matter trying to get uh, Navy officials to come forward about this. And, uh, you know, just last week we had somebody that was a nuclear specialist on uh, – and worked for the Navy, and he witnessed the UFO sighting, and he went to report it to the captain, and he was discharged pretty much the next day for being a homosexual. That's how far they'll go to uh, cover up these, these, this uh, evidence. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. sure, it's not going to be an easy uh, thing to get the government to talk about this. No, I mean, I'm amazed we really got this far already in just, in just a week and a half, you know? It has. But I think I mean, it's going yeah. Yeah, worldwide, millions of millions of people have woken up to this. So, Alex, uh, good job. You know what? Let's go to uh, some callers, and uh, maybe they got some uh, questions for Mr. Mistrata. 
got some uh, strange things going on with the phone line. You know, Alex, what's going on yeah. is that I think, uh, you know, the world's waking up, and just your uh, diligence trying to get the photos out, I think you did a damn good job. So, Alex, you know what? You know, keep us up to date. See where uh, this world ends and where it leads. Yeah, this is, again, this is only the beginning. You know, I've been two weeks into this, basically day and night, so there's still a long way to go. And I'm pretty confident, we'll, you know, at least we'll get some answers. I, I mean, maybe not all of them, but I'm on this the whole time. So what kind of feedback from the public have you uh, got? I know you've done some uh, interviews. What's the um, – are people emailing you directly and telling you what's what's the general word on the street yeah. with you? Yeah, it's interesting. I never expected this much. I mean, between the texts and the phone calls and the emails and the comments, it's been a little bit overwhelming. But, uh, you know, opinions, I've – you know, I, I heard it all the last week from some, some that are very helpful. You know, people have actually given me some leads, some people they know in the Navy and so forth, and some opinions, and I was able to, you know, kind of check some of their theories out. So that's always helpful. There's a lot of, you know, negative stuff, too, where, you know, I know how, like, Ben F, like, feels down when he got Batman and all the negative comments. But, yeah, it's been, well, it's been almost come, overwhelming. When, yeah, the trolls always come out when uh, things like this break the yeah. news. They just, uh, they don't want to believe, or they absolutely believe it, but they're out to discredit it, and that's what they do, but uh, it's quite amazing. We've been on air for about three years, third phase of the moon, controversial in every way with some of the videos that we've shared that have come in, and uh, nobody's ever come on the radio and shared what they say when they type it down in the chat line, so that's the way it goes. Let's go to a question. Uh, we've got an air code 619, Kelly from uh, San Diego. I know he's got a question for Mr. Mistretta. Go ahead. Hey, how's it going, Blake, Brent? Um, yeah, it's more of a, I was going to ask him what he thought about, maybe this is maybe somewhat tied in with the uh, 1947 Operation, Operation High Jump down there with Admiral Byrd when they sent all that fleet down there to investigate the, uh, that there was, uh, they had known that the Russians arming the Germans had an underground um, Navy base underneath the Antarctic ice. And I know there was some uh, videos I've seen before where the Russians were, they were kind of monitoring um, the communication between the American fleet that went down there. And I'm pretty sure everybody knows the story if you haven't heard. But and then um, what they what they encountered was they were saying that there was these spaceships coming up out of the water. Uh, they were more or less something they have never seen. And then uh, they had lost a one of the destroyers that were on. The, they did a full retreat. They've never heard of a military a United States or a Navy do a full retreat with that many ships and they from the story they got was you know one of the destroyers uh, got destroyed all the aircraft that they were trying to launch off the aircraft carrier were being taken out at the same time what do you think about that yeah I've heard all the stories uh, yeah, that, I mean the whole area from the Arctic and the Antarctic as well it's that stories of underwater UFOs since I mean yeah since the 40s and uh, I honestly I don't know if there's a correlation with this case per se because I, I think these pictures were taken much later. Now, I can't prove it's the 1971, of course, for sure. But, you know, with some of the uh, color photos, you can see these obviously were taken at least, you know, after the 60s, probably in the 70s. So I don't think these relate so much to, you know, Operation High Jump for Miracle Admiral Bird. As fascinating those stories are, and, I mean, yeah, I agree with you. I know the stories, and there's a lot of really good sightings from the war in, the, in that area. In fact, I mean, the Arctic has always had a lot of activity in... Uh, Iceland, Norway, uh, Sweden, a lot of the uh, northern countries, for whatever reason. For whatever reason, no doubt about that. Let's uh, let's go to another caller, 920. You're live, third phase of moon. Yeah, I've got a question for him. On those pictures, um, has the French magazine shared the originals with him so that he can study them a much with a much better quality? No, I don't have the original. Uh, we get, we, I would send some, uh, myself and John Greenwald, who's helping me from the Black Vault on this case, he uh, received some pictures last week where we were hoping were the original. And, uh, as it turns out, they, they weren't. I was able to figure out that, uh, and with the help of John, of course, that on the French website they're selling a CD-ROM. And um, they were, um, essentially the guy that sent the picture just got the CD-ROM and then copied the pictures and sent it to us. So we weren't able to study the originals, and I, you know, I wrote an email, obviously, to French magazine, and it never went back to me. 
so I don't have access so, to the original pictures. So in the, some of those pictures, it shows like kind of like a cloud around it. Is that where it's splashing into the water? Or I mean, I couldn't quite tell. Yeah, you can tell if you really look at that picture. There's a little red dot. It looks like fire in the middle. So if it's okay. obviously an object that's going down, it seems like it was maybe it was you know it was it was a Navy target maybe, and it was hit, and it's obviously going down. At least that's you know my theory at the moment. I I can't tell you what the object is, but it really seems right. like you know it was hit by something. So, right, in one picture, it looks like there's like a dot or a piece of it that's broken off that's flying out away from yeah. it. Yeah, one of the theories, that, uh, and this was John's theory as well, that these were actually balloons. And uh, we looked it up, and the Navy did have balloons they used to test as targets back in the early 1900s. Now, obviously, this, you know, this was many years before these pictures were taken. So the theory is that perhaps these were a new version of these balloons. But if you look at the picture closely, it, if you feel a little pieces flying out. Obviously, that's not a piece of balloon. It looks to me like it has to be right. something metallic, you know. But in and the it, balloon theory, wouldn't it be hard for it to be where it looks like it's emerging from the water or either going into the water because it's di displacing a large amount of water that, you know, it didn't look like a balloon could do something like that. It'd have to have a pretty large payload. Yeah, it looks more like a submarine, the weight of a submarine or something. Right. Yeah, I don't think, you know, personally, I don't think a balloon would have enough weight to have this much displacement. And, you know, the, the my, you know, my buddy, that the Hollywood guy that was analyzing these pictures, he agreed with me, too. He thinks it looks like it has some pretty good weight to it. You know, right, it's, just, uh, it's uncanny. It almost looks like the Hindenburg. It's just, uh, it brings back those memories. And it's it's baffling. Go ahead. I was just going to say kudos to Third Phase for bringing him on tonight. I think this is really a great interview. Oh, absolutely. Hey, thanks a lot. You know, um, you know, we reach out to people if we think that that story deserves follow-up and, you know, interview the people that share their UFO encounters, their videos, and information. I, I, I know there's a lot of people out there, a lot of other channels. They'll just take people's uh, videos and information and just run with it and never – ever do any interviews with the people that are breaking the news. And I think that's what uh, Third Phase of Moon is about and letting the public, you know, get to ask, ask questions. So I appreciate you uh, joining us right here at Third Phase. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the thing is, this picture, and I realized this story was going to go viral, and, you know, I want to make sure I want to come on the show since it's my investigation that I want to get the record straight before, because I already, you know, there's already a lot of articles written all over the world, and it's becoming more and more inaccurate as, you know, the story gets copied and copied, so I wanted to get the record straight. Absolutely. How many uh, interviews have you done uh, right here in America so far in regards to these uh, photographs? Uh, besides this one, I was on Coast to Coast last week, and I've been on the Jimmy Church uh, radio show what, three, four times since this came out. So, uh, and one more, I did one more interview, and I can't quite remember the name of the show, uh, last Friday. So it's you know, been busy. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It describes in your uh, bio that you're kind of like part Fox Mulder and part Indiana Jones. Tell us about this Indiana Jones action that you've uh, been involved with. Yeah, well, we put that. It was for the back cover of uh, for, on my book. We thought it would look pretty exciting. Yeah, because I've been involved in cryptozoology as well, and that's kind of where the Indiana Jones part comes forth. I spent two years. Um, one of my uh, expertise is the uh, cryptozoology in the Congo. So which I've actually, you know, believe it or not, I've actually never been down there. I've been as far as Paris, and every expedition always kind of fell through at the last second due to mostly civil war down there. But, you know, I'm sorry, go for it. Yeah, the Congo, um, dinosaurs, uh, dinosaurs been uh, spotted out there. What what do they call it? The Mokale? Mokale Membe. I, yeah, I worked two years on that uh, subject. In fact, it's getting rekindled right now. I'm trying to get some funding together. Yeah, I had some sources actually directly in the Congo and telling me what they saw. I and mean, this animal is being seen since the 1700s. The missionaries were the first to actually see the animal and report back to Europe. But all the natives have been really familiar with this animal for generations and hundreds of years. Mr. Alex Estrada, cryptozoologist. Uh, former big cats in Britain and uh, expert in hominids, African cryptozoology, worked for MUFON. 
Busy man, Alex Mistrada. Hey, thanks for joining us right here at Third Phase of Moon. Tell everybody how to get in touch with you and uh, any last words for the Third Phase of Moon viewers. We're going to be going to UFO sightings and reports right after Alex. Yeah. Go ahead, Alex. Yeah, the best way to get in touch with me is I regular update on my website. It's called thepresencebooks.com. I have all the photos of this case on there, and then I'll have a little more as the weeks go on. So thepresencebook.com. Go to the comment section. That's usually the best way to get in touch with me. Alex Machado, hey, appreciate you joining us right here at Third Phase Moon. You keep in touch and let us know how this uh, investigation plays out. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. Everybody stand by for Phase Moon right back. Third. 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 Third.